Let's add a custom boss bar to our entity. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, fans, back in today once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom boss slash boss bar to our already existing entity. Now, this is going to be basically just for you to see, okay, how could I make a custom entity into a boss, right? So this is the this is the idea. Obviously, there is more that goes into it, but the biggest thing is that you're going to get a boss bar and it's going to basically be handled as a boss. So when it comes to anything like attack patterns and things like that, obviously that is something for you to, for your own to figure out slash, let's say that, you know, still needs to be done. But in this case, what I want to show you is how you can add a boss bar to your Gecko entity over here. So this is going to be a, inside of the Gecko entity class, private final server boss event. I'm going to call this boss event equal to a new server boss event. I'm going to pass in a component. In this case, we're going to do a component that literal, and this is going to be the name. We're going to call this the our mighty gecko, let's say. After the first closing parenthesis, we then determine the color of the boss bar. So for example, white, but you can also do blue, red, green, purple, whatever you want. Let's do, let's actually do green. I think green is fine. And then here we can determine how many notches it has. Let's say 12 notches. Actually, is there 10 notches? There is 10 notches. That is awesome because the max health here is 10. So that would be perfect. And now, of course, the question is, how do we use this boss event, right? That is, of course, one of the well big questions over here, because uh, obviously it needs to somehow be used. We can go all the way down and we're going to add this in a new section, so to speak. It's going to be like this is going to be the boss bar over here. And we need three different, well, basically methods to override. Start scene by player. We need to do a stop scene by player and an AI step method. And now in each one of those, very straightforward, we call the super and then we call this dot boss event dot add player, passing in the server player that we have. So P or server player, there we go. And that's it. In the stop one, well, we do this dot boss event dot add player. Oh, sorry, remove player here, of course, not remove all players because we only want to remove a, the specific player that is no no longer sees, sees this particular entity. And then the AI step event, very straightforward. This dot boss event dot this is going to be the set progress. And the progress is going to be this dot get health. So we're going to get the health of this divided by this dot get max health. So idea being that, well, the progress of this is obviously related to how much health it has. And if it has zero health, then we're going to be a hundred percent done. And that is the idea here in this case. And crazily enough, this is everything you need for like a boss bar slash a boss event to basically happen with your custom entity. Like that's literally it. Once again, when it comes to any of, you know, different patterns, how do I change? That's all done with, let's say, goals, right? You have different attack goals. Uh, then you could, the attack goals or the goals themselves could have a can use method to be like, okay, can I use this particular goal? Yes, but only if your health is like half, things like that. You can, of course, implement things like this. That one, of course, requires some Java knowledge, at least intermediate maybe even towards advanced level because it gets quite complicated, you know, spawning of like different projectiles and stuff, although we've seen this previously. And of course, you could do similar things. There's also always, and I once again, highly recommend this, press shift twice and look at, for example, the Ender Dragon, right? If you want to go crazy, go to the Ender Dragon class and take a look at it. You'll see that this is, this is almost a thousand lines long and there's a lot of different parts to this. Right, and I think that it has goals, right? Does this have goals or does it actually use the AA brain? Because it's very possible that this actually uses the brain as well. So that even gets more complicated. But the general idea is that I highly recommend looking at uh, at the vanilla, at vanilla classes to basically figure out some more stuff. But with this, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, back in Minecraft. As you can see, we actually have four mighty geckos over here running around because, well, of course, we see them. And if I were to attack one of them, you can see then it actually changes the length or, you know, how much basically hurt it has. And if I hit it again, there we go. And now the mighty gecko is gone. Now, there's probably even more geckos going around. So that's why we get so many of them. And if I were to just, let's say, for example, take a sword, let's see if that's going to be enough to get down to three. 
There we go. Now we only got three more. And yeah, I mean, that's basically the idea, right? So we add the different uh, boss spores. And if I were to, let's say, remove myself, right? So if I go away, then at some point when I can't see them anymore, so they don't get rendered anymore, you can see they all disappear. And if I move into their range again, then the boss bars appear again. And there's another one. And we got that one. So there you go. That is custom boss bars and custom boss events added to your entity. And that's going to be for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add a custom chair. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.